In a world torn by conflict and fearful for its future, cooperation between the voices of moderation is important. Dr. Nabil El Arabi, Secretary General of the Arab League, has been in Brussels to meet with the EU's foreign policy chief and to talk to MEPs. He told them that the EU is of enormous importance to solving many of the problems and called for it and the Arab League to work more closely together to face down extremism and the fermenters of hatred. Ready? Dr. Nabil Al Arabi, you spoke about the importance of the EU in finding any sort of peaceful solution in the region. But many of the countries involved don't trust Western interference, don't want interference, even after the EU took an attitude on Palestine that did meet with approval. Does the EU really have a constructive role to play here? I believe yes. Because you, I, I, I don't know from where you got your information that you don't trust the EU on the country. Uh, every country I know of trusts the EU and believe that the EU reached co its conclusion, its positions after thorough study and taking into consideration all aspects, including the legal and social and economic aspects. I, th I, I believe that the EU has a very important role to play in, wor in world politics in our contemporary world. Do you feel that the, the vote on Palestine has actually helped to cement the EU in place there? Definitely, definitely. It did help. It showed that the EU know what are the legal position, the political position, the right political position, and willing to say so in public. What about the, the Arab League itself? I mean, there, there are divisions there, there are some kind in every of... every organization you have divisions. <laughs> That's true. But in, in Libya, for instance, you've got some, some of your member states supporting one side uh, and some supporting the other. Yes. Does, does, does the Arab League have sufficient coherence to play a major role in bringing peace? In Libyan peace, I think we are trying to do our best. Yes, there are one or two or three countries have different views, but the majority do believe that it's up to the uh, Libyan people uh, and it's up, we have to respect legitimacy and legitimacy here is the parliament that was freely elected by the Libyan people. But of course Libya is not the only country, we, we look at Syria and, and, and Iraq. Syria is completely different. Syria, no, no, Iraq, there is no, 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 no uh, different views at all about what's going on in Iraq. In Syria, yes, there are certain different views, not that much, but in general it was part of the, it started the, part of the, what has been called the Arab Spring, where people went to the street, want change, want social democracy, want uh, social justice, want uh, rule of law, want... Uh, good governance and uh, one has to look at it that way that uh, from our point of view according to the resolution i speak on behalf of the arab league i speak on, on the basis of resolution that adopted we would like the aspiration of the syrian people to materialize one day you, you spoke about the the arab spring and there were many hopes raised at the time in, in your own country you, you said your granddaughter took part in the demonstration in tahir square you yourself called for mr musharraf to be to, to step down has it been a disappointment or do you no. feel that we're expecting to... no 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 it has not been a disappointment we got rid of the despotic regime uh, that started very well but after 30 years what can we learn from the European Union is a rotation no one should stay long than what is supposed to be four years five years six years two terms or whatever but to stay for 30 years and continue or try asking to his son to come and take power after that's not accepted that's exactly what happened in, Sy in Syria there was a regime that is continuing for 44 years and people want to change uh, it's normal to ask for that but after the change, quite often comes factionalism. You get different different groups fighting with each other, and it, it, that 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 well, seems. I, it, yes, it's much more than what we expected at that time. No doubt about it. I, I accept. I agree on that. But I remind you that in in some of the European countries who went through radical changes, political changes after the collapse of the Soviet Union, for example, in Eastern Europe, it took seven, eight, and nine years for things to settle. We are now in the fourth year only. Are you, are you uh, concerned that we, we do have the problems in, uh, particularly in Iraq? You've got um, ISIS, for instance, uh, uh, by whatever name they're known, Da'is. They, they are active there, they're in Syria. They seem to be spreading, they seem to be able to attract young people raised with Western values and in Western countries. How can you counter that? No, I cannot give a full answer to that. But we are having experts working on it to know it. Uh, I don't understand and I will never understand why people, regardless of their origin, who have been raised in France will do something like that. I cannot understand it. And I cannot justify it, of course. And uh, I, I need someone to uh, try to find out social uh, scientists, uh, psychologists. Uh, I don't know. But it's a, it's a phenomenon that has to be eradicated. 
the EU can help in this way that we could uh, work together and because we, ha we have decided in the, in the Arab League now all the foreign ministers have agreed upon a policy to comprehensively uh, counter uh, the terrorist uh, phenomena that we have seen around us and that needs not only military and security ways but you need to look deeper into the cultural, religious, educational, economic, social uh, consideration or factors that will do that and it will be, it take some time to try to understand it and you need to understand it to, in order to, to counter it properly. Thank you very much. Thank you.